really it has to do with trying to see the world the way God sees it is really the emphasis we're, we're trying to make. Uh, there was a song some years ago, uh, let me see this world, dear Lord, as though I were looking through your eyes. And you know, there's, there's a lot to life, as we were singing that last, that last verse. Uh, you know, a lot of times we get things backwards. Our glory is ourself and the cross is kind of, you know, we kind of leave it to the last. But uh, we need to put ourselves last and, and glory in the cross. And God has that, that blessing for us. I'm going to read quite a few verses here, Acts 20, starting in verse 17. I just want, to, want you to get the context here of, uh, of the situation. As, as Paul had called the, the leaders from Ephesus, uh, Acts 20, verse 17 says, from, from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, You know, from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I've been with you at all seasons serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying and weight of the Jews. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. I'm just going to stop reading there. I want to talk to you this morning about serving. Uh, Paul, uh, when you think of a servant of the Lord, uh, one of the people that would come to mind would, would be the Apostle Paul. And, and he talks here about uh, all the troubles that, that were there because of his ministry, but his goal was to finish his ministry. His goal was to continue being uh, the servant of the Lord, to finish his course. Uh, and he, he uses the phrase there in uh, verse 20, how I kept back nothing. You know, he, he just invested himself in the ministry that God had, had given him. And I, I want to, to look this morning particularly homing in on, on verse 19, serving the Lord. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations. You know, serving involves a lot of things. But one of the keys is that, that word he uses there, it's humility. It, it takes humility to be a servant. The servant of the Lord. There, there's people in the Bible that God uses that label of them. One was, was Moses. And I believe God makes the statement that there's not a meeker person on the earth than Moses. He was a humble man. Uh, Joshua, God calls him a servant of the Lord. David, uh, in the New Testament, there, there's others. Uh, James says, a, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, that's, that's what we want to be as Christians, is the servant of the Lord. And I think if we really understand who we are as Christians... That will be our understanding, the servant of the Lord. Uh, Jesus talked about it in uh, Matthew chapter 6. Uh, I'd ask you to turn there with me, if you would, please. Matthew chapter 6, and uh, starting in verse 19. Again, I'm going to read a fair portion of Scripture. Matthew chapter 6 is a familiar portion of Scripture to many, especially certain verses that... Uh, that the Lord used there. I, I would say um, that uh, sometimes we, we take verses just so individually that we forget their context. Uh, but there here in Matthew chapter 6, let me start reading in verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, I say unto you, 
Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. <laughs> now let's just stop reading there. Uh, serving. He, he makes a statement there in, in verse 24. No man can serve two masters. But did you notice the context? He started up, well, he, there's a whole bunch more, but in verse 19, he's talking about treasures. And when he comes down to that in, in verse 24, he ends that verse, you cannot serve God and mammon. And mammon, you know, it's not really a word we, we use very commonly nowadays, but it just means treasures. It means the things that, that we value. Uh, being a servant of, of the Lord, God makes a very stark statement here. He says, no man can serve two masters. If you're going to be a servant of God, you've got to choose. Am I going to be his servant or someone else's servant? And he makes it, the way he puts it, I've always found this interesting, even as a kid. Uh, either he'll hate the one and love the other, or else he'll hold to the one and despise the other. You stop and think, what's your attitude towards the Lord? Uh, do you love him and, and hold to him, or do you hate him and, and despise him? I, I mean, really, you stop and think what those, what those words mean. Uh, God calls us to be his, his servant. You know, logic dictates that you can't serve two masters. It, God says it, of course, and that, that's what makes it true. But uh, just logic is, shows us this reality. You can't have two people that you're in, in servitude to, two beings. Uh, no man can serve two masters. And the specific example he gives there uh, is mammon treasures. And he relates it as well to our vision. You know, how are you looking at things? Uh, if your eye is, is for the Lord, he said, you're going to be full of light. It's an interesting statement there when he says in verse 23, if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? <laughs> the Lord has a sense of humor, I think. Uh, that's that's a, a phrase for you to think about. If the light you have is actually darkness, ooh, you, you're really in darkness. And you know, there's a lot of people who think they're following the Lord and they have nothing to do with Him. How great is that darkness to think that you're, you're in the light and you're actually blind. Uh, what, a, what a terrible thing it is. God says no man can serve two masters. And He brings it down to, to the end of the chapter there. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Put God first. Uh, if He's your master, uh, your treasure should be related to Him. Your vision should be related to Him. See, Christianity is not getting religious. <laughs> it's not adding Christianity to the rest of your life, putting it somewhere in, in the mix. Christianity is humbling yourself before a new master. It comes, with, it comes because of humility. We have to humble ourselves uh, before the Lord. Let me give you an illustration of this in 1 Thessalonians. Uh, I'll actually be in chapter 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 he, he talks about these, these folks, how that they had, you know, the Word of God had come to them and, and they received it, you know, the Holy Spirit. Uh, they became followers of the Lord and they were examples to people. The Word of God sounded out from them. Uh, th these were people that it was obvious they had, had trusted Christ. He, he, he gives a phrase here in verse 9, 1 Thessalonians 1, 9. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you. And how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. There was a major change in their lives. 
And to, to follow the Lord, you have to turn from and to. Uh, we have to turn from the world. They had to turn from idols. You know, that was, a, that was what they would have grown up with. That would have been their culture. That would have been their, their people. They had to turn from that to following the Lord. And the same is true today. You know, no matter how we're raised, no matter what our background, uh, no man can serve two masters. You can't value anything above the Lord and follow the Lord. Uh, it's so important for us uh, to understand uh, this, this very simple, simple concept. That word turned there in verse 9 uh, turn to God is uh, sometimes translated, uh, it, it's the word conversion. Uh, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. It means a, a turning, a, a change. There has to be a complete change, a change of direction. In Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Change of direction. No, no more about I, it's about Christ. A change of, of master. And I would ask you this morning, has there been a conversion in your life? Has there been a time when you've trusted Christ as your Savior? Uh, Isaiah said, you know, we've, we've all gone our own way. Well, that, that way leads to hell. We have to turn from our way to God's way. Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. So, so number one this morning, we can't serve two masters. And you, you see how he relates it there in Matthew to what's important to us, what we're seeing, what we're doing, how we're spending our time. Uh, what's, what is true riches to us? The second one is in Romans chapter 6 and verse 6. There's so much you could say about being a servant. I, I've just chosen to take a very simple route this morning and, and look at several verses. But uh, Romans chapter 6 verse 6 tells us our, our second uh, point. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. No man can serve two masters. Well, when you decide to, to give your life to Christ, uh, the Christian should not serve sin. Very simple phrase, isn't it? Uh, we've been set free from that old master. Verse 7, he says, He that is dead is freed from sin. I've mentioned this before. Listen, when you die, you're, all your obligations are over. Uh, nobody can bother you anymore. And when we die to, uh, to sin, when we trust Christ, he says we die with Christ. He, he, he says it over and over in this chapter. For instance, verse 4, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. We died with him, we raised with him. Verse 5, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. We died with Him, we rise with Him. Uh, verse 8, If we be dead with Christ, we believe we shall also live with Him. Uh, verse 11, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So over and over He says, You died with Christ, and now you need to live with Christ. Uh, we've been set free from that old master, and we're alive in Christ. Uh, we have a new master. Uh, let me suggest a good project for you this year. Memorize Romans chapter 6. It's not as hard as it sounds. Just read it over a few times every day and you'll, you'll be amazed how, how quickly that will ingrain itself in, in your heart. But he says there in Romans 6 verse 6, the Christian should not serve sin. Uh, no man can serve two masters. We should not serve sin. Then in Romans chapter 7 verse 6, he shows us the positive side of it. But now we are delivered from the law that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit, not in the oldness of the letter. Uh, we shouldn't serve sin. We should serve in the newness of spirit. Now he's relating that to the flesh. Verse 5 of Ro Romans 7. When we were in the flesh, the motions of sin which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Not in the flesh. Um, Later on in that chapter, verse 18, he says, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. The flesh has to do with, with your desires, what you want to accomplish. You know, the world promotes this all the time. And they don't stop and think about how, what a bad track record they have. You know, our world's in trouble. 
And it's because we're promoting live for self. We got a bunch of selfish people running around and they keep bumping into each other. Man, that, you know, I'm the most important person in the world. No, I'm the most important person in the world. And we got trouble. Boy, does it surprise us? God says, put aside the, the flesh. As Christians, we've come to the place where we've decided, I'm going to have a new master. God is going to be my master. And we're, we're not to serve sin. We are to serve in the newness of the Spirit. And let me tell you, that's an exciting way to live. Uh, you know, God uh, takes you beyond yourself to the things that every person really wants. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness. I mean, all those things. You ask people, what do you want? Oh, I just, I just want to be happy. Well, God doesn't necessarily promise you happiness, but he does promise you love and joy and peace if you'll submit yourself to him. Uh, we should serve in newness of the spirit, uh, not in the flesh. Romans chapter 8 Verse 1, he says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. We're set free. And God says our spirit can be changed. God will change us as we follow Him. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 11, just a, a simple phrase here in, in the midst of a whole bunch of phrases. He says, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. As Christians, we don't have to be depressed. And somebody said, I was down in the dumps today. What were you doing down there? God says we can be fervent in spirit. God can change us from the things of the flesh, our own sinful and selfish desires. And this whole area there in Romans 12, he lists so many things. Uh, he goes on and says, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, uh, instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality, bless them which persecute you, rejoice with them that rejoice, and so on. Yeah, just a whole list of things. And what he's saying is that being the servant of the Lord affects every area of your life. It affects how you think. It affects what you do. It affects your relationships to people. The servant of the Lord. And you remember what, what he said back there in, in Matthew? Uh, where, did we, where did we start? Yeah, Matthew. Uh, no, Acts, that was it. Uh, he said, in humility of mind. In humility of mind. Serving the Lord in humility of mind. And when we truly have a humility of mind, when we've submitted ourselves to be the servant of the Lord, listen, all these other things will not, uh, they won't be what makes the difference. You, you, there's so many things in life you can focus in on. You know, someone says the wrong thing to you. Something bad happens. Something, you, you can focus on those, or you can focus on the Lord. You can have humility of mind. You can think, well, I deserve a lot worse. <laughs> I have to keep reminding myself of that. You ever, you ever gone door knocking? A good way to keep humble. Go door knocking. People think you're dirt. <laughs> yeah, they, you know, they, go away, go away. Uh, a good way to keep humble. But you know what? There's people who, when they trust Christ, their family kills them. There's people when they trust Christ, there's people who throw them in jail. Today, in our world, uh, it could be a lot worse. And I deserve no better. They did it to my Savior. We need to serve the Lord in humility of, of mind. And the way it happens that our spirit is changed is that we submit to the Holy Spirit. God's Holy Spirit works in, in every situation. Uh, in Galatians 5, uh, 16, he, he says, let me find that here. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. God wants us to walk in the Spirit. Uh, the lust of the flesh has to do with our spirit. That's not the way we want to live. Uh, the Holy Spirit, God says, came in at salvation. If you're a Christian, if you've trusted Christ, he says your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you which you have of God. And God's Holy Spirit is trying to produce fruit in you. Now maybe you're kind of like my garden. <laughs> uh, you know, a, a bit of soil at the top and, and clay underneath. Uh, well, God can, God can change that. God can soften the, the hardest hearts. God can, listen, if, if, if a plant can grow in the cracks of our footpaths, 
Uh, God's Holy Spirit can make things grow in our hearts. And uh, we need God's Holy Spirit to reign. Uh, we need to serve in newness of spirit. And you need to remind yourself of that every day. Listen, don't let your spirit reign. You get up in the morning and oh, I feel bad. Well, big deal. Get over it and serve the Lord. Come on, folks. Why should we live there? Why should we go there? That's, that's not the ruler anymore. If you've trusted Christ, He's the ruler. He's the master. Amen. And God can, uh, can use us in whatever situation we're in. You know, I think of Paul. You, there's some, uh, some little verses that will say like he was in prison two years. It's just a little verse. Well, man, if that was about me, I'd have written a whole, I'd have written three books about it, you know. Uh, and yet he was, he wrote from prison a book about joy, a book of Philippians. You know, uh, he was able to serve the Lord wherever and whenever God was doing, you know, whatever God was doing in, in his life. Uh, the servant of the Lord says yes to his master. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He says no to other things. Servant of the Lord. You know, sometimes we have to say no. Galatians 5, 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. You understand that word contrary? <laughs> and there's things that are going to want you to do the other thing. God says, this is the way. Walk in it. And your flesh is going to say, no, nah, we don't want to go that way. Uh, your friends sometimes, you know, other the situations going to say, no, don't go that way. Follow the Lord. Say yes to the Lord. Say no to these other things that would lead you away from it, to, to the flesh, to, to sin, uh, to the world. Uh, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What a blessing uh, that we can live for the Lord. Uh, no man can serve two masters. And he says when we're saved, we should not serve sin. We should serve in newness of spirit. Let me give you one more. It's the one that we sang this morning, 2 Timothy 2.24. Uh, many of you know this because we've, we've sung it so often. The servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And look at verse 26. That they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Uh, as Christians, we're able to help people get out of the snare of the devil. Now, the servant of the Lord must not strive. That word strive means to argue and fight. Have you ever met somebody who, no matter what you said to them, they'd argue with you about it? There's just people like that. They just, they just like a good argument. They like to fight. They think it's the fun thing to do. God says we're not to be like that. We're not to be people who are arguing and fighting. He says we're to be gentle. We're to be teaching. You might say, oh, I'm not a teacher. Listen, we all teach. We all teach by how we live, what we say, and what we do. Yeah, having the little kids in the home now, man, I've got to be careful what I say. You know, they got good memory. They remember everything. You know, uh, teaching. Patient, meek. Meek means our strength is under control, under God's control. You know, as Christians, it's not about getting our way or having everyone play by our rules. Look at Romans chapter 17, I'm sorry, verse 14, verse 17. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. It's a whole chapter there, and, and the concept is, is there that we want to be a blessing to others. And Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not just a physical thing, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And here's serving. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. This world, it's not just all about the physical. He says it's, a, it's about the spiritual. And if we're going to serve Christ, we're going to have to serve him in these things. And the things he's talking about there is righteousness and peace and joy. And in that context, it particularly applies to our relationship to others. We need to make sure that from our life, we're, we're doing our best to live a righteous life. How it affects others. 
uh, that we're living a life that, that will bring peace and joy. In fact, the next verse, verse 19, he says, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. See, it's not about us getting our way. It's about us being a servant of the Lord. The servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle, be a teacher. You know, sometimes we're, it doesn't mean we're going to agree with everybody, but we're going to agree in a way that will help them to get free from Satan's clutches. Uh, there are those who live to fight. And the Bible says here in Romans chapter 16, verse uh, 17, he, he says this is, this is a selfish way of living. Romans 16, verse 17, I, I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you've learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Now we're not, we're not talking here about people who stand on God's word and, and present God's word. We're talking about people who are just fighters. They're just always fighting everybody and trying to push their way. God says avoid them. Now, I uh, probably should take more, more time on this and, and present exactly what that, that means. But uh, in Proverbs, he, he uses this, this way of expressing it. Proverbs 22, verse 24. Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. I was thinking about that the other day. One of the ways you can tell an angry person is they blast you and they walk away. And they won't give you a chance to, to even have a, a conversation. I've had times, I've, I've had times in, in the past where I've had our church quit going to camps because it put us around angry people, angry pastors. And we, we did, did something different. People who would blast you and, and ream you out, but they wouldn't give you, uh, they weren't interested in a conversation. Uh, they, they were just angry. Uh, God says we need, that, that's not the way we should be. We shouldn't just be angry people. Now we'll disagree. Hey, listen, <laughs> you'll disagree with me more than anyone, because I say more. <laughs> and uh, I just have to wear that, don't I? Sometimes I'll say the wrong thing. Sometimes I'll do the wrong thing. Man, I appreciate when somebody in a, in a godly spirit says, Pastor, did you know that you said this? Or uh, did, did you understand that when you said that, that hurt that person? Or, uh, you know, there's, there's going to be things where we'll, we'll be wrong. And we can, we can talk to each other about those things because we're both servants. And we're both servants of the Lord. And that's important. That's where we started. Acts chapter 20, serving the Lord uh, with all humility. You know, that was God's call to Israel. To serve the Lord. Let me read you a verse here from Deuteronomy chapter 10. Now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and to keep the commandments. God's, God's call to Israel, give him your heart, serve him with your whole heart. And you know, that's God's call to us today. God wants us to, to give our heart to him. He wants us to humble ourselves before Him. Let me read you Hebrews 12, 28. Wherefore we, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. God expects and demands rightly our humble, our humility before Him. That we would be his servants. He very simply and clearly says, you cannot serve two masters. And the question I would pose to you this morning is, really, who's your master? Who's your master? Secondly, we, we should not serve in sin. We should not serve sin, I should say. We should serve in newness of spirit. We should have a servant's heart. Not, not striving, but following righteousness and joy and peace. Uh, th this morning, I want to encourage you, serve the Lord with all humility of mind. A servant of the Lord. Are you saved? You know, when you stand before God, there's going to be some who have done Christian things. And God is going to say, he records this in, in Matthew chapter 7, God is going to say to some, depart from me, I never knew you. 
you worker of iniquity. Do you know that there's people who are, what they're doing for God is sin because they're doing it selfishly? That which is not of faith is sin, the Bible says. Wow, that's, that's pretty tough. But God says there's going to be some who they thought, oh, I'll do this for the Lord, but they've never become a servant of the Lord. They've never humbled themselves. And he's going to say, depart from me. But there's others he's going to say, well done, good, faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. And the key is, have you entered that relationship with God through Jesus Christ? God says there's only one way to God. It's through his son, the God-man. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind starts with being a servant of the Lord. If you are a servant of the Lord, are you living like a servant of the Lord? Uh, one of the things that's involved with serving, I mentioned a couple of things, I think, when, when we started. Humility, tears, temptations. Uh, that's part of serving. But you know, serving also involves work. It means you do something. Paul talked about his ministry. He talked about his, his work. And if you're a servant of the Lord, you need to be serving the Lord. Serve the Lord in your home. Uh, serve the Lord in your school. Serve the Lord in your church. Uh, God has given us opportunities. Are you living as a servant of the Lord? What, what I'm praying is that God will help us to have a different view of life than, than the world has. That we, would, that we would see things the way God sees it. As we look through the, the lens of Scripture and the lens of His Son and His Holy Spirit, uh, we want to have Acts 2020 vision is, is the point that we're making with that. Um, we, there's a song we sing, I've decided to follow Jesus. Well, to follow Jesus, you can't keep going your own way. You just put your hand in His and you say, Lord, wherever you lead, I'll go. And uh, what a blessing it is to know he said he'd never leave you or forsake you. And he'll, uh, he, he'll look after you all the way to heaven. Uh, this morning, let me encourage you. Uh, th there's so much more that the Bible says about this. Be a servant of the Lord. Look at some of the lives of people who God calls his servants and see the character that, that they showed. Moses, Joshua, you know, these different ones, David. And... Uh, Incorporate that into, into your life. But it starts with becoming a servant, being, trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior. Let's, let's go to him in, in prayer this morning. Father, thank you so much for your word. Lord, we don't understand everything about this, but uh, Lord, we understand the simple fact that, that you're the Lord and, and you have every right to call us to serve you. Lord, help us to humble ourselves and uh, to seek your face and turn from our wicked ways uh, that we might hear from heaven. And Lord, if there are those this morning that are not saved, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would help them to see that. Help them to trust you. Uh, Lord, how much you love them and, and how you've made become the way of, of salvation. Thank you for that. Help us to live for you, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing that song. It's page 10 in your hymnals. Uh, I have decided to follow Jesus.